Oh yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. I just refreshed that, and it's good now. Nice. Okay. Anyway, so you were saying? All right, we back chat. Yeah, pretty much what I was saying is, let's say that we're in a multi-way pot and someone flats from a small blind. Uh, Pav had a board. It was it was like three, four, five, and he was asking me, does the small blind ever lead their sets? And my answer was that the small blind never really has any sets because they should be flatting all higher card combinations. And the, the boards that they get to lead are something like 8, 9, 10. And they're never going to lead them for a big sizing. They're usually going to only lead them for a small sizing because they don't have a... Uh, they don't have not they just they not only have a polarity advantage but they have a full range advantage um, yeah it's this hand right here that Pav's yeah. showing so we're talking about the small blind also we were talking about Pav's c-bet sizing um, so multi ways this is a pretty good uh you definitely want to find some bets as the as the button but you don't need to bet big here because it's pretty rare that someone's going to flop a straight and we can just generate tons of regression for a really small sizing um, and like so they're pretty much only going to be continuing here with like straights sets and two pairs and very rarely lower flush draws so when you bet really large you make it harder for the lower flush draws to continue which is not what we want we want people to continue wide here so that we can make higher flushes and so that we can take aggression on the turn because um, now you're like betting small on the flop makes your turn really weird because now you have this ike mosquitoes person with like 1.6 spr mm -hmm. and you just have to check back the turn and you don't have the ability to take more aggression so like betting small flop betting large turn and shipping river is going to usually be your best line here um, when you do take aggression. Would you continue as a small blind with a hand like Jack-Jack any flush draw or Jack-Jack any heart-heart combo? No, that's a snap fold. Uh, multi-ways. So multi-ways, multi, multi -ways, if you ever are... Like, let's say that the small blind had like Jack-Jack 10-10 -Jack, double-suited heart spades, mm -hmm. right? As good as you can get for that hand class in this spot. That's still going to be a fold because if you're C-betting into four people, Generally speaking, um, you're either going to have the nuts or you're going to have the ace of hearts in your hand. You mm -hmm. should never be betting flush draws that are like king high flush draws and queen yeah. high flush draws into multiple people. All right, yeah. So you're saying we can do more limping in the highest stakes because the rake isn't as punishing. So I was kind of figure out, figuring out like which hands I want to limp versus pot. One, two is still pretty punishing for, for rake, I okay. think. Uh, we actually have the, the, the two ranges that we have built in the Advanced Miller Mastery Course are for one, two, and 10, 20. And one two still gets punished really hard. Okay. This this combination is fine to limp though. The ace three ten eight with a suit. A lot of the times people uh, misplay their small blinds in that they don't pick the correct hands to raise, and they also don't pick the correct hands to limp. And that's it's like one of those things where you're getting it wrong in both places a lot of the time. Uh, and so it just takes more calibration. And specifically for your small blind play, you have to just look at you just have to look at hand class charts to know like what your worst opens are because that's going to help calibrate you into knowing what's a limp and what's a raise uh -huh. a lot of the time. Um, Cause it's hard. For, I can't give you any like general tips. Like for example, uh, I see a lot of people limp hands like eight, eight, six, five, one suit when that hand's actually a raise. Um, I also see people raising like ace, ace, jack, 10 double suited when that hand actually plays as a limp. Cause you want to limp re-raise it. Yeah. Um, your double suited aces play as limps. Your single suited aces play mostly as limps and then your uh, rainbow aces play as raises. And so it's just, it, when it comes to the small blind is just a really difficult portion of the game tree to get right, unless you look at solved solution. It's hard for me to make any general heuristics. You just got to put in time to it. Wait, what was one of the combos you liked as a limp raise again? Like ace, ace, jack, 10, double suited. It's double literally suited. a limp re raise. But you're never going to choose as an RFI. There's going to be a pure limp raise. So double suited aces are like 90 something percent limp re raise, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Uh, and then single suited ones are. 70 something and then your for limp re raise and then the uh rainbow ones are always a raise all right anyway so this hand's playing through now played a limp call with the ace three ten eight yeah and i'm assuming that you continued on the slop right somehow i played a check call with the open and the uh which is really bad with that diamonds here right because you yeah. can even have queen ten and fuck us big time this is a terrible yeah. call yeah, this is a straight check fold with no diamonds. Okay. I, if I had one, if I had one diamond in hand, or if I had like a nine in my hand, I'd play it as a check raise. Uh, but mm. you need a little bit more board interact. So the way that you think about building check raises in PLO is you want to have equity in your hand to make good hands, and then remove equity from your opponent's hand to mm -hmm. increase their folding frequency. Um, and so this combination, let's say that the three was a nine, uh, you can play that as a check raise, but you can't play it. But um, just because the probability of your opponent folding is higher.
playing it as a check call when you don't have the nut straight opportunity and no diamonds in your hand just doesn't play very well. You want to play it as a check raise and then pick good turn cards to barrel and then give uh -huh. up on other turns. Nice. So you like a you even like a check raise fold here with the same combo but with a nine instead of the three. Yeah, I would check I would check raise fold with the same combo with a nine instead of a three. That's so cool. All right. Yeah. And then this turn, uh, you're just sort of, it's actually, you're supposed to call this turn with no diamonds in your hand, I think. Call the turn with no diamonds in my hand. Yeah, because it, it just increases your yep. opponent's bluffing frequency, and they don't have ace jack very often, because they didn't 3-bet you pre, and you have an ace in your hand. And so a lot of the times you just have the best hand, and since you have no diamonds, their bluffing frequency goes up. So it looks kind of weird, but I actually play the, the turn. Once you check called the flop, I'm probably check calling the turn also. Actually, or... Or check raising the turn, just like getting really savage with it <laughs> because because they don't have ace jack. You block ace jack and you still have your straight draw and you have no diamonds in your hand. So turning your hand into a check raise on this turn when you block the top two pair and you're the one that originally raised pre flop, so you're winning in the ace ace region. That's not a bad play at all when they bet twice. So I might even like a check raise more than a check call here. That's pretty savage. Yeah, dude. No, yeah, in blind versus blind. Once you, when you have like he didn't three bet you pre, so you're winning in the ace ace region. And so well, I then, limped and he iso. That's what happens. Oh, sorry. Never mind. He's winning in it. That's yeah, different. Okay. That's different. Okay. I, I thought he, I thought you raised and he called. Yeah. No, that's completely different. I don't. You probably don't get to play a check raise as often then. If it was the other direction, then you get to play check raises. But in that situation, you don't. You play a check call on the turn. All right, so I check call on the turn. Diamond on the river. Four of diamonds. It's just a snap fold. Like ninety percent so. Yeah, it's just a snap fold. Also, 90% isn't a sizing that exists on this river. It's either half pot or full pot. People do this weird shit where they're like, I'm going to bet 90%, or I'm going to bet 78%, yeah. and it just loses them so much game value. It's just it's way easier to simplify your strategy to like two discrete sizings. Um, and on the river in his position, you're betting full pot with your nuts and your second nut flushes, and then the blockers to those, and you're betting half pot with all your lower flushes, and then maybe <laughs> you're like your sets with one diamond in them. And that's the easy way to split your range. But that's the sickest part, right? So whenever you see half pot in that spot, you know you're always up against value. Like, which hands do you decide to call with? Oh, no, you can totally. No, I totally am bluffing with... Uh, I'm, I'm bluffing half pot with, like, my queen of diamond hands. I would have, like, ace, like one ace and the queen of diamonds, and then, like, ace, queen, 10, eight. So I don't block any of the flop two pairs, but I have one ace, and I block all the straight draws. So I'm anti-blocking all the other two pairs. I have one diamond in my hand. So that would go into my half pot bluffing range on the river. Okay. Um, Wait, you'd bluff with an ace and the queen of diamonds? Yes, I would. Because it's not, it's very, it's not going to win, especially if I have a 10 and an 8 in my hand, because that blocks their straight draws. So it puts them in a more likely scenario to have two pairs. That's so Pilo's, sick. Pilo is a funky game. Um, and a lot of the time when you bet hot pot on the like you're not trying to get people to fold flushes on the river when you bet hot pot. Maybe ace queen is like a little too good, but for sure if I had like ace ten eight five or a, on a low card where my ace kicker is bad, that's gonna be a that's gonna be a pure bluff. Um, because we just we're very rarely having the best hand. They can they can have better aces like ace king ace queen and betting and you need to find bluffs to fill the the portion of your range that you're betting for half pot when you have a flush. Right, because we bet we bet half pot on the river to get people to continue wide, and we bet full pot to get them to continue more narrow. And so you, it's and so it's kind of funky when you start to fill your half pot betting range there on the river. So, are you mucking two pair? Is that a position if you river two pair facing a half pot size? What are you doing? Depends on my depends on my side cards. Okay, of course, side cards are so fucking important. Yeah. So so if if I have so for example, having if you bet half pot on the river, having the queen of diamonds is better than having the king of diamonds as a blocker because the king of diamonds should be betting full pot mm -hmm. whereas the queen of diamonds should be betting half pot so um and so it's it's kind of it kind of gets interesting so like if i have the queen of diamonds in my hand and you bet it's a much more i'm supposed to call it a slightly higher frequency than if you have than if i have the king of diamonds because the king of diamonds should be going into the full pot sizing more often on the river than yep. my queen of diamonds are and so that's where a lot of like the very small intricacies of side cards come in. I'd also be calling, like, let's say I have, um, if I have like ace, if he full pots the river and I have ace four with the ace of diamonds in my hand, I'm snap calling. I'm not even thinking about it. Yep. Just because when he, or either that or check raising. 
like let's say I just have pure ace of diamonds with no with no showdown value, that that hand gets turned into a check raise every time. Um, would you want to would you want to bluff with the ace of diamonds facing up pot size though? Don't you think if people are yeah, gonna pop oh. there, like if people are gonna pop with like a second that flush, don't you think they're gonna station that spot way too much? I think uh, I mean that's that's like explo shit. Yeah, but... I probably should have talked about that. It just confused me. Yeah, it's uh, equilibrium is I have ace diamond in hand. Um, they bet yeah. full pot. I have range advantage. I say pot. Yep. And if they call you, they call you. But that's also why side cards are more. That's why side cards are important because you can modulate their calling frequencies based on their side cards. Like for example, if they full pot the river, and you have no pair blockers, they're more likely to have pairs and like, or and you have a bunch of pair blockers, they're more likely to just be pure bluffing, or to have an or have a flush. And so your side cards are really important when determining that as well. All right, let's go to the next hand. Uh, we have the King 10 Jack 5 Rainbow in the small blind, coming with the limp. King, uh, Rainbow rainbow hand is a no no, always. Always. Oh, like, I mean, if I have like Ace, if I have like King, Queen, Jack 10, I'll play it as a raise, but I'm very rarely limping a rainbow combination. Okay. Yeah. Even though someone Rain playing less than 100 bigs. <laughs> um. The five is really bad if they are playing less than a hundred bigs. Okay. Because you want to have more, you want to have more high card power. So if they're playing like fifty bigs and you have ace king queen, uh, ace king queen ten or something rainbow, that's fine because we don't care about flushes as much because they're only fifty bigs deep. But this dude's what eighty bigs and you have a five in your hand and the five just plays horridly at this yeah. stack to pot ratio, especially with uh, with no flush cards in your hand. Okay, so um. Ignoring that, we're coming with the limp. <laughs> <laughs> we no, got, that's good. Yeah, we got the, yeah, yeah, we got the king six deuce monotone with a ton of hearts. What are you liking here? I, I bet one big. Oh, I bet actually. one big blind. Is it like a range bet here? Um, it's a it's a get them to fold a ton bet. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you just want them to you just want them to fold a ton, uh, and you have one heart in your hand and a king in your hand. Uh, just click click one big blind. They fold at like I don't know some stupidly high frequency. And that's really like I'm probably betting I'm betting most hands that have one heart in them on the flop here, and I'm definitely betting hands that have one heart and removal to continues from my opponent, just because we get to destroy people. Uh, thank you for the raid, Richie Rob. Appreciate it, mate. All right, so we played the sand trash as well. That's nice. <laughs> P Dude, PLO is a PLO is a confusing game. It takes time to recalibrate your brain. I like how you just Im immediately stepped up to one two. You're like, fuck it. Well, dude, I'm in the hole for five k. I'm like, I'm gonna get my money back right now. <laughs> yeah, it's not I how need, it works. I needed to get. I needed to get the blood flowing. You know, I was like, fuck this hundred no show. Also, the hundred no pool was like dead. Like it's crazy. Yeah. The two hundred, the two hundred PLO pool has um had I think twenty runners. Oh wow. And... It's good. No, no, sorry, 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 sorry. It was between six and ten runners for like for like the first thirty minutes, but the five hundred PLO pool had like forty six runners. Oh yeah, PLO five hundred on parties is, is probably popping right now. Yeah. I would totally, I would totally play that pool. My my games are in sick currently. Everyone in Las Vegas is a yeah, degenerate. No and can't go to shit. Oh, yeah, I need so to get good games, at this game. Yeah, the, the games are good right now. The games are really good. Okay, so the uh, hand coming up, I limp the tri suit, ace queen ten four, and the blinds called the raise. I would probably raise it, but limping it's not terrible. This is fine as a limp call. Okay, come with limp call. Board is pretty bad. To do Actually, at his no, at his stack size, you want to be raising because ace and queen oh, and sure. ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. You just yeah. Want, like your ace and queen and ten are powerful cards. Interesting. Yeah, this hand's stronger. Having a tri is stronger than having a rainbow recently. <laughs> yeah, yes, that makes it is. sense. Okay, so yeah. Come also, there's a big call. difference between there's a big difference between King Jack Ten and Ace Queen Ten. Yeah, yeah, massive difference. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, go check check on the flop, and the turn's interesting here because we turn a pair, but we don't hold any spades. I'm trying to think uh, like his best hands that check back that flop. I have a question for you. Okay. What what else? So we we have a pair, and we're not blocking spades. What else aren't we blocking? We're also not blocking straights that might want to check back jack nine, nine, six. Yeah, exactly. So we're literally blocking the part of his range that we want him to fold, which is his pairs, and anti-blocking the entire portion of his range that we don't want him to continue with, but that he will continue with, which is straights and flushes. Yeah. 
Oh, luckily, that's why I guess I played the check in this spot. But I was thinking, like, but do, doesn't Imposition want to do a bunch of barreling with like nine six on this board? Or maybe they just on the flop. It? Yeah, not, not not a ton. Not Especially really. if you have a if you have a spade and if you don't have spades in your hand, then no, you just want to play a check back. If I have nine six one spade, I'll probably bet it. If I have, especially if I have like seven six nine with one spade, I'll bet it. Um, but bear nine, we have to remember in PLO like, just the nine six isn't important because if I have nine six and a spade in my hand, I can generate lots of folds and have equity uh, when called. But if I have nine six no spades in my hand and I don't have a pair blocker either, it's super likely my opponent's just going to beast me because they have because I'm not blocking any of the spades that they can continue with or the pairs that they can continue with. And so, in, in, like, that's a huge difference in Hold'em and PLO. In Hold'em, you're like, all right, I have an open-ended straight draw, mm -hmm. and I can bet here, and it's not very likely that my opponent has a flush draw, and it's not very likely that I have a pair, so I can use my equity to generate lots of folds. And in PLO, the same thing is true. You just have to ha use more information because it's like, okay, I have the 9-6, and I have to also be thinking about what I'm not blocking from them. Does it make sense for me to say this right now? I feel like what makes PLO so beautiful is that mm -hmm. the skill, although the variance is so much bigger, I feel yeah. like the skill gap is also bigger because there's so many more combos to think about. The skill gap, the skill gap, dude, the, I, 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 get, I am fortunate to get to study with some of the best players in the world. It is fucking insane yeah. what these dudes do. Like, they are, they are so dialed in to... Like two, there's like 270,000 combinations, right? And you'll be on the turn in a spot and they will just know for pretty much every hand class at what frequency each player in all positions will have everything and then be able to modulate their betting based off of that. And I'm just like, it's like my brain gets fucking, like I'm pretty good. These dudes are better than I am. And yeah. it's because they put in all this work. Um, but I definitely, that's one of the reasons I like PLO so much is because I just get to beat the hell out of people with aggression and in hold'em i think that that it's gotten a little like we just you just don't have as much information and so you're yeah and so the aggression that you get to take is very is a lot more for lack of a, like obviously with um with the solved game it's it's um precise as well but in plo you just have more tools at your disposal and i like having more tools like i like i like knowing more yeah in hold'em we have to kind of assume more and plo we get to know more that's have, that's like, what i love about it that's what i love about yeah. it yeah. All right, so go check check on the turn as well here, and the river is a six. I'm trying to think what hands we'd want to bluff here with, or if we ever have a check call or what. Uh, if we ever have a nine in our hand that's not a straight, we're betting that. If we're, we ever have, we're betting that. if we have like, um, no, yeah, like like queen nine, like king queen nine five with a spade, it's a good bluffing card. Okay, we don't ever have check uh, calls here. Yeah, we have check calls here. We have yeah. check calls here with our... Um, we probably would check call our straights that block two pairs. So let's say we have seven, eight, and nine. That's a better check calling hand than if we just have um, like nine jack, the nuts. Because if we're blocking the two pairs, those are combinations that our opponent can call us with that we beat. But if we're not blocking the two pairs, those are the ones that we want to put into a checking range. Say that again. Okay. So, no, no, no. It's 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 kind of a it's kind of a confusing subject. So, on the river, let's say that we're trying to determine which straights we're betting. And when we bet our straights, we're not betting it for full pot. We're betting it for our our small sizing. On the river here, we're gonna have two sizings. We're gonna have a quarter pot and a full pot. It's kind of similar in the other situation where we'd have a half pot and a full pot on the river. In this specific spot, when it goes check 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 check, the out of position player gets to play a very small sizing to generate lots of aggression and a full pot sizing in order to get value and, and, and to bluff. And so our straights are all going to be going into our small sizing, which means that we can get our opponent to the, the main calling class that we want to get called by is two pairs. Mm -hmm. So we want to, we'd want to get called by 10, eight, 10, seven, seven, eight, um, stuff like that. And so the straights that we want to bet are the ones that block the two pairs the least. So I'd want to bet nine, six more than I would want, than I would want to bet, um, 10 9 8 because if i have 10 9 8 it's unlikely that my opponent has two pair uh -huh. therefore my bet is not going to get called as often by a hand we beat so i'm going to check that one whereas with 9 6 it's the same straight but it's more likely that my opponent has two pair now therefore my straights can get called by a worse hand love it and you're going to play the jack on as a check raise on the river 
Um, I'm not going to play the jack on as a check raise. We only get to check raise flushes. What the fuck? He's not. Is he checking back flushes for like? Is he checking back flushes on the turn? No, but is he calling a check raise with a worse hand than jack nine? Like, jack. Oh, I yeah. mean, you can you can maybe check raise jack nine with one spade in it to like very rarely. Maybe get like the get the ace ace nine five one suit to call. No, no, you're no jack nine is trying to get straights to call. Jack nine, Jack nine is trying to get nine ten to call. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. No, that was well said. That makes sense. Cool. Thank you. All right. Fast forward here. Oh, here's a good one. Okay, so we got oh, yeah. the ace three four nine double suited on the button. We call the cutoff open. Big blind and squeezes. Pretty. Small. Uh, yeah, is this? A, is this a, no, that's that, that's possible. That's possible. Pot, pot, okay. It yeah, felt it felt yeah, small in real time. Six. It's six. So the way, easiest way to calculate the pot is multiply your bet by how many times it's in the pot. So it's six times four plus one is twenty five. Because you have six. So it's your bet times three, plus six is twenty four plus one is twenty five. And that's how you calculate okay. the pot. Okay. Um, do I like the button flat four handed? Uh, this is like kind of close. I, I'd have to look at my uh, cutoff to button ranges, but we actually aren't three betting as often cutoff to button because we actually get to play a really wide calling range. And so if I had something like ace, six, seven, nine, double, I'd be three betting that. But this combination, I'd, I'm okay with playing as a call. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's another thing that a lot of people, uh, yeah, you could call three better fold. Um, I don't want to fold this because I like beasting people with double suited hands. <laughs> um, but oh, so something that people mess up is that they three bet the button more than they should, because you're actually supposed. So let's say that under the gun opens, um, and we have our cutoff three bet frequency and our button three bet frequency. Our cutoff three bet frequency is actually sorry, higher than our. Here we go. What's up, chat? Do you guys love the great game, not guys and gals? I was wrong. The dude was knocking right. another chick stool. Okay, you're good. You're good. <sighs> um. So pretty much what I'm saying is uh, you have, you get to three bet the button less than you would the cutoff. So when the cutoff opens, our, our button three bet's not super high. So this is fine as a call. And I probably call the squeeze as well. Yep. Uh, what about ace three, four, five double suited? Well, and is there a difference between ace three, four, five and ace deuce three, four? Um, ace three, four, five is a little better. They're, they're in the same hand class. So I don't think about them too much. Okay. It's just like it's pretty close. The nine's not great. The nine's a, you'd much rather the nine be a ten or a five. You, would you ever want to three bet the ace three four five double suited on the bottom? No, I'd much rather have okay. ace five six seven. Yep. You can have more of the middling balls. So you can make more straights. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I peel the squeeze. That's fine. Oh, thanks for the sub goldfish. Two months. Appreciate it, mate. Bats. Oh, Thirteen months total. And we get the 10 do 6, 2 spades. We got the nut flush draw here. And we face a pot size bet. And this is where I was like, hmm, do I call just to try and get there? Or do I play a jam here, blocking aces? What is the approach? And what, what was, like, sorry, I'm about to see a sizing. Give me one second. Okay, so I haven't pressed play. <laughs> no. Yeah, I just need to see a sizing. It was pot, 55. Um, I would just, uh, so when they pot it here, you have very little fold equity, but your absolute equity on this flop is really high. Like a lot of the times when they're potting it, they're going to have just like, when you have an ace in your hand, they're going to have king, king, x, um, like kings with a spade draw. And against that, with the nine in our hand, the, it kind of, you can kind of get a little hyphy and maybe play a call, but I don't mind a shove either. Uh, I think both are, I think call and shove are both good. Um, I might want a little more interaction to have a shove. So instead of the two, maybe it's a three, or sorry. Um, no, that that gives us a straight draw. I'm trying to think. I guess I get. I guess at this specific SPR, when he pots it here, it's a two street game, which means mm -hmm. he um, pots flop and then is going to be checking your potting turn. And we can call all turn pots. And so with this specific combination, you might get to call so that it, let's say that the turn's a seven, and then he checks. We get to shift the turn now, blocking straights. So we get to generate extra aggression that way, whereas. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of a different comp like if I had um, a more raw equity, less blocky hand, like uh, ace jack, ace queen jack six with spades, 
I yeah. could probably play more of a shove. Um, but in this specific spot, I might be okay with a call. I'd have to look at the, I don't have a good answer for you. Yeah. I'm actually leaning more towards call because we get to bluff the Jack seven and Jack seven, eight, three, four turns are all cards that he might check to us and we can pot. And then we still just call pots anyways on, um, on the turn. On the turn, and it's very like it's very unlikely that this person is bet folding a hand that they won't be check folding the turn anyway. So we don't have a lot of fold equity on the flop. Yeah. And so I'm just trying to find I'm trying to find a way for this hand to get more. Um, I'm trying to find a way to get more fold equity out of this. And then Damon asks, "Are you folding board pairs? If you flat, yeah, the answer is definitely you fold you fold board you fold board pairs. Like those are your bad turn cards. Is the deuce six and ten. And it's great when the turn's a nine and then he checks and we just get to ship it. Because let's say that he bet, he check calls with like bear kings. Our nine now added a three, a four, a nine, and a nine to our outs. No shit, yeah. Oh my god, I didn't consider yeah. those two power outs. So many fucking backdoors in this game. Yeah, so backdoors are incredibly important, which is why this hand is more robust than it looks. And a lot of players, and this is something that a lot of people do and I still um, struggle with, is they just see, they see like, all right, I have a pretty good hand. I don't really know what to do pot <laughs> and it's just like yes and and it's and it's and it you're not lose so let me let me so chris actually said this to me um you're not losing money by potting here you're, you're still making money mm -hmm. um it, it's, a, it's a plus ed play but it's most likely that you can like you can find more finesse in your game by picking the correct combinations to make more money by playing a call it's just that a lot of players even like i i still work on this like this is something i still struggle with is it's just it's hard to find these really weird finessey spots that you can extract more value or you can extract more game value from your opponent by having um by having just more non-pot aggression in your game because like you, you go through this thing it's like i don't know how to play plo i'm never gonna pot it oh i kind of know how to play plo i'm gonna pot it every fucking time and then you yeah. get a little bit better and you're like wait does it make sense to pot it here or am i just or am i just losing game value by doing it um and so in this spot this is a plus ev play but it might have been a little more plus ev to flat yeah um, i mean, I mean that's that. that's very well said it's like when people say like yeah. why not just open jam aces and makes money but you know raising has high ev yeah exactly that's a good way of saying it um and you were saying you're going to fold all pairs in this board. So if we, if we have a hand like um, ace, no, ten... Paired, nine... paired boards. I'm going to fold... Oh, so if, I'm, if, I, oh. if I flat the flop and the turn comes like a ten or a six or a deuce, mm -hmm. and, they, and they shove, I'm folding. Yeah. But if the, turn, if the turn comes a ten and they check, I'm, sh I'm ripping it in their faces every time. Sick. Okay. Yeah. So we if we just call the flop... Uh, we are in an advantage in like the ten, the tens region. We'll have like eight, nine, ten, uh, nine, ten jack, and stuff like that more than our opponent will, especially because we flat it on the button. And so, if the turn pairs the ten, that is the worst card in the deck for the out of position player when we uh, just flat the flop. Yeah. And so we have to bet it with one hundred percent of our range, pretty much, including this combination. For a small size? No, we just we at, at that point it's going to be a shove because. Okay. Uh, actually, what's their stack? If they bet fifty five and call. Be like 160 and five in the middle. You could bet like super small. You could bet one fourth pot and then shove rivers. Like that's totally a thing that you could do yeah. as well. I might pick a combination that has more equity to do that with, like an eight nine combination versus just our bear three four. But not bad to bet like super small. Like if you're on the turn there, your two sizings are 20% or 100% after calling the flop with an SPR of less than one. Okay. That was a good, that's a good point though. Side note, I love how we started just doing, like you just kind of started playing below, started playing PLO because you're like, oh, the course is coming out and now you're fucking in love with it. It makes me so stoked. <laughs> <laughs> it's sickeningly addictive. It's a good game. It's a great game, some might say. So 10 rolls off, we get there, but then he rivers a boat. So that was fun. Welcome to the great game of PLO, where you get it in, and it just it's a 60-40. <laughs> oh yeah, no, this is the hand I came into your stream with. Oh wait, no, this is a different hand. Um, hang on, so we got the ace-10-6-7 nut suit. Um, small blind button, come in with a pot 3 bet. Ace-10-6-7, three-handed. Seems fine. Little, slightly hyphy, I'd probably rather like ace-7-8-10. Versus Ace Ten Six Seven, it's a little, little mm. bit disconnected, um, especially yeah. 
especially i mean it doesn't matter as much because you have the small blind uh, the small stack in the big blind but you got like a slightly high fee dude i'm so excited for this hand i think i i, th I think i played it perfectly i can't wait for your right. <laughs> your opinion what's your what's your sizing uh one third on king queen seven rainbow king queen seven when they call that's fine one third one third or one half is uh, about the same the thing that sucks here is that when they call and you don't have a king and a queen in your hand they got lots of kings and queens in their hand like yes. king x king x queen x or king queen and so i'm fine with the bet uh as long as you this is a very easy bet fold that they do raise uh, mm -hmm. but i like the bet because we have the inside straight draw we have the backdoor flush draw, and we have the seven, which is some good removal. We'd much rather remove a king or a queen when finding aggression here, but I'm okay with the bet. How much of a difference is having ace-jack, six, seven here? Because with ace-jack, don't we block more king-x combos that play a call versus straight bet, like king-jack? So like it'd be a better not, double barrel? Um, not that big button versus small blind, but if it was like under the gun versus small blind, it'd be more important. Because okay. there'd be more there'd be more connectivity in the under the guns range. The way you want to think about like a really easy way to think about uh, PLO preflop is the earlier the position, the more connectivity you're going to have with your combinations. So if under the gun raises, it's much more likely they're going to have like king queen jack versus the button can have like t king ten eights mm -hmm. um, just because they're allowed to open at a higher frequency. And so that removal concept that you're describing is more important the the, t the tighter the ranges are. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. All right, hit him with the one third, get the call, and then the turn is a six. And six. That's wow, we do. this is so funny. I just realized in real time I actually turned two pair. I didn't know I had yeah. two pair. I thought I just had a seven. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. What do you do? You turn two pair. Uh, I go for the half pot bet. In real time, I thought I just had one pair, though. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I go for the half pot sizing because I feel like that's the sizing we want to go for here. We can go for the half pot jam. Uh, I go geometric. I go two thirds shove. Half pot because half pot leaves you with a full pot size on the river, and I like to go two thirds, two thirds usually when I'm when but, I three bet. But isn't, bet chart. isn't that the same geometric going fifty one hundred versus two thirds, two thirds? Um, kind of. So. When we're betting a larger sizing on the turn, we're trying to generate more folds. Whereas when we bet our half pot sizing, we're going to generate less folds. Uh huh. Yep, that makes sense. And so, so ge okay, uh, please fold. Geometric generally means that you bet incrementally, such that by the time you get to the river, you go all in with some sort of um, with some sort of logical pattern. So like, one third half pot full pot gets you to the river where you bet half pot on the turn, and then there's exactly one SPR on the river. One one third, two thirds, two thirds makes it so that um, you bet one third on the flop, two thirds on the turn, and then you have the exact same sizing on the river, which is what you want to do a lot of the time when you have value combinations, um, just because it allows you to bet. Uh, it allows you to. It, the math works such that um, if you're balancing your ranges appropriately, it's just it's really easy to bluff and to value bet at the appropriate frequencies using geometric sizings. Um, and whose book was that? There's a book about it, um, or it's, it's a concept from a book. But yeah, I'm I'm fine with half pot, full pot. I like I usually like going two thirds, two thirds in in that spot in a three bet pot, just yeah. because I'm because if I'm betting the turn, I'm usually like pretty fuerte in my um, in my range. I'm not gonna have a ton of bet folds. I, I will so your hand actually wouldn't bet a bet fold. I would have bet two thirds on the turn with your hand and fold to a shove. <laughs> Sicko, I love it though. Yeah, I mean it makes sense. Like we we have way better hands to go. We have king, queen, kings, queens. And we're still generating aggression, and we could have the best hand because we don't block like King Jack Ten, Queen Jack Ten that that hard, and we have no hearts in our hand. Um, the thing that what 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 kind of sucks is when you start playing against um, concepts. Uh, yeah, that's right. It's the it's the one by uh, by Chen. Thank you, uh, Ad Adubs. Um, but like when we have no hearts in our hand, let's say you're playing against me, and I have like King Nine Ten with hearts. I'm gonna just like rip it in your face. Every, That's so disgusting. Every, yeah, just I'm gonna do it every time. Don't do that to me, please. No, I will. I do it to everybody. It's not, <laughs> it's not, it's not just it's not just you. <laughs> um, now, are there any rivers you would value jam on? Like, would you value jam on a deuce on this run out after betting turn? No. no. You're just playing a, a uh, check call on the river after betting turn. It depends on the river, but I'm jamming a jack. I'm jamming a six. I'm jamming a seven. Um, and I'm not jamming any hearts. But you're playing check calls with your bricks on the river, yeah. I'm playing check calls on 
two, three, four, not five, because we don't block eight, nine. Yep. Um, and then nothing else, I don't think. So I'm, I'm, so our bad rivers are king, queen, 10, nine, eight, five. Our good rivers are six, seven, jack, two, three, four, five. How do we feel about an ace river? Uh, pretty pukey, but yeah. not, but like that one is close because we have no hearts in our hand and we block jack 10. Yeah. So we have, so it's, but it, ranges get pretty narrow at that point when they've called twice. And so your one block, like if I had two tens in my hand, uh, it'd be much closer to a call. But if I have one ten in my hand on the ace, I'm probably just check folding. Okay. Yep, I'm happy with that. All right, plus four to here. <clears throat> uh, okay, pick up the ace, king, seven, nine, trisu, not the nut flush draw. Heads up. Call a three X. Yep, calling is fine here. Uh, if I didn't have a, if I didn't have the tri suit, I would three bet it. <laughs> Even with the second up flush roll. Yeah, Ace King seven nine heads up at hundred bigs is a three bet without a, a tri suit. Nice, that is a nice end for sure. Uh, yeah. So it goes check check on the seven eight deuce two spades. Sexy turn. Yep, and I just like to play this as a check raise. I like potting it because when when they don't. See about the flop, they're capped. And so their turn bets are gonna be hands a lot of the time that they're check folding, even if they're value betting them. And so, and also they could just be checking back like 10 high flush draws on the flop and turn. Oh, because... yes. And so, and so I'd much rather just pot it in their face and generate value. Well, that's really important because I'm always playing this as a check raise on Peeler, like all the time. Yeah, this is a this is a, so on the I actually don't play too many check raises. The, pretty much the only check raises I'm playing on this turn are like pocket eights, um, king eight nine ten, maybe with with like one spade. Uh, but normal the way that you play turns in this is we have an entire section on this in the course. Chris made it. It's wonderful. Um, it's your turn probes. So on this turn we play two sizings. We play a one third sizing and we play a full pot sizing. So hands that out when the flop goes check check hundred big blinds deep. So if my, my one third sizing range is going to look like some seven, eight, some seven, eights, like my five, six, seven, eight, I'll bet one third or one fourth with uh, one between one third and one fourth, my seven, nine, 10, three with spades, I'll bet one third with. Um, this is as my, the out of position player? As the out of position player. Yes. We have two sizings, one, uh, like a quarter pot and a full pot sizing with King deuce. I'll probably bet one third, um, King seven, King eight uh kings ace king spades all that goes into my full pot sizing wow well, and okay. i play i play i play less check raises this 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 is a really complex part of the game tree that's gonna i can't give a like that's why i made the course yeah, but yeah. That, that's a tldr is that you get two sizings here which is a quarter pot size and a full pot size and with your especially this combination because it just like it generates so much value by betting full pot because you can just get called by so many worse hands so button shouldn't have a bet call here that is just a single top pair they can have some bet calls that are top pair but it's going to be hands that have like the king of spades and king high flush draws so it'll be yep. like king king queen jack king high spades are going to be their bet calls um but they're they should they should very rarely be playing a full pot sizing on the turn um they should be playing a half pot when they check back the flop because the board texture didn't change so dramatically that uh, that their range has become more uncapped because they're going to be c-betting a lot of their pocket kings anyways. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, check, I, check on the turn. That's yeah, a I love pretty interesting river. Nine. Yeah, I played a check because I. What's my reasoning here? Wait, this is um. I'm trying to think back to that because we, we just spoke about this, didn't we? We kind of just did. spoke about the spot. Yeah, it's a very similar spot. So I'm looking to get cold by two pairs on the river here. Yes, you but are. The, the problem is I'm blocking the most likely two pairs he has in his checkback range. That's correct. You're blocking the 7, 8, and 7, 9. So and the 8, 9. So I think playing... a check hole has higher EV or 
a very small bet. Yeah, you're either betting one third of your check calling. Um, and I would bet one third if I had a 10 in my hand or a six in my hand. Okay, yeah. Uh, but without those com without those two cards, I'm probably check calling. And I'll, yeah, having the three pair sucks. Just not as good. Yeah. If you have just king nine or king seven, that's plenty to, to bet one to bet your small sizing with. All right, I love it. All right, let's do let's do ten more minutes. All right, I'm down for that. I'm gonna find the good hands then. All right, so we called a three bet here with the a six ten nine one suit, the nut suit, bottom versus small blinds. You didn't. You opened and they called. Yeah, let me just double check. Yeah, it's heads up. I just I played heads up with this guy for a bit. So yeah, I came in with the pot. Yeah, it was no three bet. And then we get yeah. the jack four nine. Pretty easy check back. Yep, this is a good uh, good check back. And king on the turn. <laughs> now I remember this then. I felt like a genius, but let me know what you think. <laughs> uh, he checks, and I think I go for the pot size because I blocked his turn two pairs. Like I blocked the king nine. I blocked his best king X with the ace. Um, although, to be fair, he's probably pure three betting like every ace king xx combo, right? So we 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 care literally zero about blocking ace king here because ace king is one pair on a straight draw flush board. So that's a that's a that's a hold'em thing where it's like I'm blocking top pair top kicker. Top pair top kicker doesn't mean anything on connected boards. Okay. And so we care less about that. What's more important is we have the ten in our hand. Yeah. Because um, it blocks the nuts, but. I don't like betting full pot here because we didn't bet the flop. And a lot of the a lot of the time when we have queen ten combinations, we're going to be c betting the flop. And so uh, the board texture changed, which means we're not completely capped. Like we'll have some nut straights, but not enough to justify a full pot sizing. So usually on this type of turn, when the board texture changes, I'll bet about three quarters. You're going to bet queen ten five five no hearts on the flop. No, I'm not. But I'm gonna. But I'm. But I don't have enough of them. That that was a very specific queen ten combination. Normally, when we raise the button, we have like queen ten nine, queen ten jack, yeah. two queen ten. Uh -huh, uh, of course, queen ten. Of course. Yeah. Right. And so and so we have some queen tens, but not enough queen tens to to justify a full pot sizing. Um, and also, when we do have our queen tens, um, because they didn't lead the turn, they're much more likely to have two pair combinations, which means we want them to continue wider. We don't want to bet full pot and get them to fold a bunch. We want to bet about three quarters pot and allow them to continue with most of their two pair combinations. Okay, so do you like a, with this particular combo, you like a two thirds bet or three quarter bet? Yeah, yeah I'd, bet, I'd probably bet three quarters. And what are you doing on rivers? Are you looking to bluff a depends bunch on, of bricks? Depends on, depends on the river, yeah. Um, on hearts, if I have no hearts in my hand, I'm not barreling. On a nine, I'm betting one half pot for value. On a queen, I'm betting one half pot for value. Sorry, I'm betting full pot on a queen because that gives us the nuts. Yep. Um, on an ace, uh, when I have no hearts in my hand and have a 10, I might bet half pot. It's very close. And then on bricks, I'm potting it a lot of the time, just depending on the brick. And I'm never betting a king or a jack, ever. Like yep. zero, yep. zero percent. Okay. Please hold cookie places, blockers, greater than this whole cards. You should watch my PLO streams. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I will Dude. show you. I will show you how to use your side cards. <laughs> okay, so this is a uh... yeah. We three bet the ace king six twos. Heads up. Uh, no quiero. I don't want that. The six like the six deuce is just too disconnected, and you want to have good ace kings in your calling range. And so I'd much rather just play it as a call. Okay. Yeah. Ace king six. Ace king six, six seven. Because it's probably closer to a three bet, but even that's in a call. I'd rather have like ace, king, ten, six, like one other high card. Well, in order you, to you still to... prefer to play the call with like the ace, deuce, three, king, one, two, ace, deuce, Yeah, four? I do. Okay. Um, heads up, you just want to be able to beat people up with high cards a lot of the time. Yeah, I guess six, seven is really good, right? We have a, we have all the board. We have the middling. We have the high end as well. Six, six seven. See, but the thing is like, it, we have the middle, but we don't have it well. Because let's say the flop comes 8, 9, 10. We have a straight, but it's the bad end of the straight, and we can't take a lot of aggression in a three-bet pot. Okay. I'd much rather I'd much rather play that combination on in a single race pot so I can just check call, check call, check call with it versus versus taking more aggression. Yeah, that's well said. That makes sense. Yeah. Three yeah, three broadways is a good it's a good barometer with an ace suit to find three bets with. 
Okay, this is um what I was really wanted to know in session. How much C betting do we do on paired boards out of position? 10, 10, 6 ago. Good question. Um, we get to C bet more the lower the cards are in a yep. three bet pot. So if it's like fours, fives, sixes, uh, twos, threes, fours, fives, sixes, uh, those are going to be C bet one third or one fourth, very small. Um, tens, we get to see, but not as often at all because we are really competitive with imposition. So we're actually not get, like 10, 10, Jack, Jack, queen, queen. We three, but those at a much, I'm oh, sorry. We see, but those at a much lower frequency, this combination having a six in it might be when you can play a check raise. <laughs> That's so fucking sick. Um, because the six is a good card to have here. You'd also want to have, I'd, I'd much rather, if I'm going to see bet this flop, I want to have proximity blockers or additional equity. So I'd want to have like um, eight, nine jack. It'd be a really good, if I had like eight, nine queen jack, that's a really good C bet here because we have all the cards around the 10. And yeah. so it lowers the probability of them having a 10. Um, not uh, by a ton. Of course, of course. But yeah, proximity is a thing though. Uh, it's not like super huge, but it, it does exist in Munker. We see it in Munker. Um, in this combination, when we don't have an eight or a nine and we check, we're actually going to get a lot of bets by like the seven, eight, nine combinations. Uh -huh. And that's why we get, and we have a six in our hand, which blocks boats. And let's say that they have, and a six actually acts as outs a lot of the time if they're back calling jacks for some reason. So I like using this combination as a check raise. Oh my god! I thought you were about to say you like it as a check call. Fuck's sake! No, I, okay. No, it's not. A, it's not. A, it's not good enough. We have. We're gonna have aces, kings, queens. All of, these, of course, of these course. Yeah, this one, this one, I put in my check raise most likely because it's kind of hard to find check raises on this board. But I think that your combination is a good check raise combination because if they're bet calling queens and jacks, your ace and your king are good outs. Your six is an out, and you block the boats already, and you and you and you anti block all of their bets like their seven, eight, nine combinations. Yeah, I just I guess I get really confused if I check raise flop. Like, what are we doing once we get cold on the flop? We're just doing a, are we giving up a bunch? Um, we're giving up on any. We're giving up on all the turns that. For, so first of all, when we check raise flop, we're betting the turn small always. We yeah. bet it very. We bet it very small so that we can continue aggression. And so if the turn comes a seven, eight, or a nine, we're giving up. Yep. If the turn comes a ten, we get to bet small, a lot of the time. Or, or we check it depending on our, our cards in our hand. Uh, if it comes a six, we bet it. It's it's a it's a tough spot, but that's why you're not check raising at a super high frequency. But also you you need to. That's why it's important to build the turn small sizing range because that's what that's what kind of gets you out of this spot and makes mm -hmm. it 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 causes more indifference or more uncomfortability for the imposition player if you're not just like checking your potting the turn but betting it small at a higher frequency. Because then what do they do? So it just makes their range uncomfortable. And and you want to, that's in PLO. You can do that and hold them, kind of. But in PLO, it's just so easy to make people stupidly uncomfortable often. Yeah. And that's something you want to do. Do you think um, turning the deuce here means anything? Yeah, it does. Because it gives you full house outs. Yeah. Um, I would, I could, I would check, I would check rip this turn. <laughs> Actually, I think that if you're gonna check call flop, with, if you did check call flop with this combination, yeah. you have to find check. You have to find check rips, and you you just got four clean outs to a boat. And I think that they're betting their seven, eight, nine uh, straighty stuff twice, and yeah. just to just to generate folds from your overcards. And you need to combat that aggression with aggression, and it's really hard to find bluffs here. So I would check rip this one yeah. most likely. Okay, cool. All right, let me fast forward, find some good three of pots. I guess this is a pretty cool spot. I defend the ace eight three five one suit versus the button. Yeah, this is actually a very this... cool spot. Cause I, I want to know how much I can check raise here. On the flop. Yeah. You you generally don't want to check raise without. Uh, I think people actually misplay this flop flop a lot by check raising too often. You either want to be check raising with like. With three, four, five, six, seven. Sorry, three, four, like with like a big wrap or a set. Um, a lot of like people get kind of carried away check raising your specific combination because let's say that he has eight, nine, ten jack, never folding. It's absolutely never folding to a check raise. And so you don't actually have to generate a lot of folds. Um, 
But if that was not a fold, it's a check call. If I also two third sizing here, you, you call yeah, this as is, well? Yeah, really? I check call I check call lead all board pairs. Check call lead all board pairs. Yeah, I check call I check all the flop. I lead any two, three, ten. Um I check raise a four. I check call an eight or an ace, and I fold other stuff. You lead the board pairs, and you only lead board pairs. You don't lead any low cards. You play the shuffle no, so, before. No, the the um, monker allows leads in single raise pots from the out of position player, primarily on board pairs. Because um, the out of position player, once they check call, has the has the um, pair range advantage more often than not, so they get to play more leads. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I just figured in this spot, that's a big size on my backdoor spades. Yeah, but you still have a pair, and then all your two pair outs and a nut yeah. and a pseudo nut out. I underestimated the power of the two pair outs, I guess. Yeah, it's important. Like, hitting an eight here is really good. Hitting an ace here is really good, because you'll have two pair and a straight drop. Yeah, um, and, and, and you can, eight and you is can... super good. It's super disguised. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's not... You wouldn't check raise an eight, you'd check call it, but it's still plenty. Yeah. Uh, this is the hand I asked you if I could three bet it. You said no, it's just a. Wait, I think you said, uh, what did you say? It's a fold or a fold? I, it's a fold, I think. I think it's a little too wide. The deuce is suited, though. <laughs> yeah, but the nine sucks. The nine's not that bad, is it? Yeah, it is. The okay. nine's bad. Monker hates it. it when, you have, when you have these kind of two, like, if the nine is a 10, I'd three bet that shit. Like, actually. Yeah. But I think that I, I think the nine is is that bad that it forces me not to. Okay, this is an interesting hand coming up, I think. Okay, so I believe it was a raise, blind vs blind, and I three by the king, the, the king, king, three deuce, one suit. Three deuce suit it was. And we get the three, four, eight rainbow. He opened, you threw, you should call this, you should three bet this hand. Not three betting kings in position with a suit. Uh, the, the king high suit's important. Okay, so we three bet the king if we have king does a club suit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, okay. Just because in three bet pots, you, you want to be able to flush over flush people, it's important. Um, and it's you also want to have some kings in your flatting range. You don't three bet all kings. Yeah, no shit. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. So I end up getting a pretty amazing flop here. The two, the three. It's it's, it's, it's funny. It's, you say pre, you say pretty it's, amazing, and my brain goes eh. <laughs> like it. It's not especially when he calls a three bet because he's gonna have a lot of like the six, seven, eight type stuff. Mm. And and like the three is okay, but our like we have no backdoor flush draw. We're playing one like we're playing one pair pretty much the entire time unless we turn a three. Um, and so I what I'd probably do here is I would in a three bet pot I'd bet half pot or a little smaller that's fine too one third is fine okay. and I'd fold to a check raise. Oh no! Don't say that. Yeah, just because like their bluffs have you slaughtered. If if he has five six if he has four five six seven you're fucked. If he has if he has five six seven eight you're fucked. If he has eight nine ten jack or like ace queen ten eight. Or ace five eight any eight and any other four cards have you just beasted? What are our bet calls in this spot? What are our bet calls in this spot? Um, if you have king king eight, that's a good one. If if you have uh, king king five six, if you have king king deuce five, if you have uh, king king four six, blocking some of the straight combinations. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, so king 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 deuce, like the side cards are really important here. What are you doing with ace ace ten ten? What am I doing with ace ace ten ten? Do I have backdoor suits? Yes, we'll say. Uh, then you're continuing. It's a pure continue. Um, if also I'm not always c betting king king ten ten. I could I could check back like rainbow king king ten ten and yep. maybe bet. Uh, and and bet the ones with backdoor flush draws. Yeah, I really gotta start exercising more checking out in position and through the pots. Yeah, it's definitely a thing. Alright, so uh, please please fold. Seeing a turn here is not a no-brainer. Alright, you want you want one more hand out of me, Pav. Uh, one more hand after this hand? No, this is no. So this did you call? 
This... I, sh I shoved, I shoved her because I got King's oh, money. Oh no, no, it's no bueno. I got, I got backdoor green cards. <laughs> backdoor green cards that are the lowest ones. Yeah, but <laughs> it's not low if he's not holding green cards. You you turned your hand like you're effect. So if you're gonna bet small ship this flop, you should just be potting it on the flop anyways. Uh huh. But because you so you can generate more fold equity. But this is not this is not a if he if he calls here, yeah you're just destroyed. Like, how much hand equity? Top, how much equity does he have here? Do you know? Like sixty something. You're you're for sure not a favorite. But we don't need to be a favorite when the pot's already so big, right? In your bet three bet flop range, you're gonna want to be a favorite. A lot of the, I, uh, I'm. You're gonna want to try to have more equity. It was, yeah. it's the way that I play PLO. Because uh, if if you're getting, because he got it in here, really good. But he can also just have sets. He can also mm. like you could just be dead. And you are pretty dead here. It's really if you won this hand, that is a sick hold. Uh, I lost, and I thought I was the unluckiest player in the world. <laughs> no, you got it in bad and lost because you deserved it. <laughs> That's one of my favorite things about PLO, as a, and this isn't just you, just a general thing. As people are losing, everyone's like, I'm the unluckiest player ever. They just always get there. I'm just like, bruh, you didn't construct anything correctly. You're gonna get destroyed. Like, this game punishes people that don't play it well. They just, it just is so incredibly punishing. All right, well, that was a good sesh, mate. Okay, yeah. I was, that, uh, that was, we, this one seems fine. Anyway, yeah, yeah. I appreciate you. To this third. Okay, it's done. RIP. Uh, thanks for having me. As always, I hope you all appreciate the great game of PLO. Um, be on the lookout in Upswing. We have some very, like, we just launched the Advanced PLO Mastery course, where if you're trying to get in PLO, especially as you're sitting inside right now, because the games are phenomenal, not a bad time to study. Um, also, be on the lookout. I, I have some content coming out. I, I have some mental game content coming out, which is uh, hashtag relevant as I bust my challenge from almost being done. Uh, but we also are going to have some free low barrier to entry PLO content coming out because I'm seeing from your stream and I'm seeing from uh, from some other places that there's not a lot of good I've never played PLO where do I start content yeah. that exists. And so we're going to be building that. So be on the lookout for it coming up. Pav and I can keep doing some sessions to give you all a taste of the great game. So that's just gonna that's gonna include the basics we're looking to create though. Yeah, so we're looking for, we're gonna we're nothing is in detail yet, but we're definitely in the process of trying to like create bare minimum stuff yeah. for PLO. Like how to think about the game. Like similar I'm, to the um upswing lab. Yeah, similar to the upswing lab. Definitely. We're trying we're trying to definitely make the barrier to entry lower so you can start playing the game. Um, another thing that a lot of people ask me is how many binds do I need to start playing PLO? And my answer is always to just like play five cent, 10 cent, get destroyed by the rake and learn how to play against the people that are getting it in all the time. Cause it's gonna make you, um, it's gonna make you more comfortable with variance. It's gonna teach you how to play hands with more robust equity. And then just down, once you feel comfortable, put like 2K online and start playing 50 cent a dollar and start battling. Like it's, it's not a big commitment. Like if you're willing to lose a couple hundred bucks, it's a really good time to do that in this game, uh, especially when I'm streaming, when Pav is learning PLO. Uh, it's, it's, it's a good time. There's lots of PLO content right now. All right, mate. All right, I appreciate you, Pav. Thank you as always for having me. Thanks Thank everybody. You, mate. Appreciate it so much. Have a good one. I right, take it easy. What do you think, chat? You like the game or not? I hate it, but I like it, you know? Bye-bye. I don't do handshakes, people.